right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've been getting this question quite a bit lately. So I know some of you OG folks already know all the modifications I've done to uh, done to Shake and Bake, but uh, I've been getting this quite a bit, so I figured it's time uh, I run another. Here's all of my modifications uh, to, uh, to Shake and Bake. So stay tuned. All right, folks, we're gonna go ahead and give you a little POV action. Uh, I got the other side camera going. Not sure if I'll put it up in the video or not because I got to make room for the uh, the list of modifications. So it is a laundry list <laughs> of modifications that I've done to Shake and Bake. So, uh, like I said, you OG folks, you guys have seen these videos before. Um, you know, I, I don't mind if y'all don't watch them again, uh, just because it's it's the same list. Uh, I do get a little bit more in depth into some of this stuff, but. Uh, it's it's the same list of modifications it's just I get this question oh man probably a couple times a day on Instagram <laughs> and then I get it in the comments uh, of the different videos as well so here's another rundown hopefully I don't contradict myself in one of my past videos but I'm gonna try and put prices up there too to give you an idea of what it what it costs uh, to get to where I'm at now or y'all go crazy and say, well, you should have just bought a Hellcat, or you should have bought a Scat Pack, or, you know, you should have done this. Uh, this is what I did. This is how I wanted to do it. Uh, feel free, if you want to buy a Hellcat, do a pulley, run low tens, hey, more power to you. You want to buy a Red Eye, low, do a smaller pulley, and run low tens, high nines, <laughs> more power to you. This is not that discussion. We've had that discussion on the channel a few times. Look back at the past videos uh, if you want to uh, know my views uh, on, on that discussion. So this discussion is shake and bake, all the modifications I've done, prices I've paid for things. So you have an idea if you want to take your 5.7 and basically make it a race car. Let's be honest, shake and bake at this point is a race car that I drive on the street. <laughs> uh, I still have my cats. I still pass my emissions, I still register my vehicle, but uh, let, let's be honest, uh, with everything I've done so far, it's it's pretty much a race car. But, so that being said, let's not argue about you should have done this, you should have done that. This is, you asked me for what I've done, so here it is, folks. And like I said, UOG folks, you, you've heard it all before. So, we're gonna start off with the Pro Charger. I went and I went ahead and got the upgrade to the D1X uh, because I knew I was gonna, going to either forge the internals of this motor or get a donor motor and forge the internals of that and then crank up the boost. So that's why I went straight for the D1X. If you want to, if you're just gonna be happy with where you're at, you know, you want to do a stock build and run the P1X and just keep it set you know seven eight pounds of boost that's the safety point seven to eight pounds of boost i, I know that's that's a, a touchy point for people too but if you want to be safe seven to eight pounds of boost stock internals just get the p1x and be happy you're still going to put down the power um it's just the d1x is is better to support more boost okay d1x Pro Charger, I got the race intercooler. And I got the uh, the blow-off valve that comes with the kit. So I didn't upgrade my blow-off valve. But I do recommend, especially if you're gonna race your car, I recommend going for the race valve. Because uh, I do, uh, uh, you've seen it uh, in past videos, I do have some issues with back pressure and popping off my covers. So race valve, uh, would cure would cure all that back pressure stuff so that being said the kit I bought was 60 right at 6500 uh, for the Pro Charger kit uh, so I'm gonna preface all this too this is no labor this is all parts so if you want to include labor it's gonna be significantly more uh, if you can do your own labor uh, this is this is the parts cost all right so I did upgrade the fuel pump 
that was roughly $350. And I've gone through a couple different iterations of fuel pumps. But if you uh, if you just go, you can upgrade to Pro Chargers fuel pump setup. Uh, I think it's I think it's right around $350. You're going to want to upgrade your fuel pump. I know a lot of people say, oh, you can run it on the stock pump, uh, or you can get a booster pump. Yep, you can do it with a booster pump, but for me, I just felt safer upgrading the fuel system, period. Uh, but that's just me. And if you are going to go E85, I definitely suggest upgrading the... What are you doing, pal? I don't know. Y'all saw that? Uh, I definitely definitely suggest getting either uh, four innovations their dual pump setup yes it's expensive you got to pay to play or Holly also has a dual pump setup uh, that will work to run e85 you are definitely not going to run e85 off your stock pump with a pro charger it's just not going to work too many people I've seen too many people try it and it just doesn't work uh, the next part is the Vic 650 injectors. Uh, I paid $630 for those. Um, I know people are going to say you can do it with the stock injectors. Uh, you can, but if you want to get the most out of it, you're going to want to upgrade your injectors. Uh, another another uh, service, public service announcement, if you're going to go E85, go straight for the 1050s <laughs> don't worry don't waste your time with the 650s because they're not going to be big enough to run e85 on a boosted application i know there's going to be arguments about that but i'm telling you it's just not going to work so if you're going to go e85 get the bigger injectors okay uh and those injectors you're looking you know over a thousand dollars to get the 1050s or i think Vic also has you know bigger injectors as well so you can go either ID or fit uh, or whatever your tuner prefers uh, when it comes to injectors all right I also have the 392 intake manifold along with the, the window switch uh, and everything that goes along with that that for me was right around $500 for everything now that's not including uh, uh, a 392 cold air intake if you're not going pro charger so that's not including that so keep that in mind if you do the 392 intake manifold and you're doing it on an NA application you're gonna have to get a uh, 392 intake manifold or uh, in cold air intake or get a stock 392 uh, cold air intake or something you're gonna have to get it you're gonna have to get something uh, that's an added cost uh, so I have the Scat Pack Stage 2 cam, and I also have non-MDS lifters, otherwise known as Hellcat lifters. <laughs> so when you hear people say Hellcat lifters, they're talking about non-MDS lifters. Um, so the Stage 2 kit was like $1,800, and then the non-MDS lifters were another $400-ish. And that just totally does away with uh, with MDS okay so I also have the HHP BES stage 3 CNC ported heads uh, for the car and those were uh, 1595 I believe uh, that's what I wrote down so I'm guessing that's what it was uh, I also have Oh, I also got the intake manifold ported. That was another $300. Uh, I got it ported and the snout uh, ported to match a Hellcat throttle body. So I got also have a Hellcat throttle body. I got that used from a buddy of mine, super cheap. I got it for $100. Uh, new, you're looking at two to three hundred bucks, depending on where you get it from, uh, for a new Hellcat throttle body. Uh, the throttle body adapter so if you're going to use a Hellcat throttle body on either a 5.7 or a 392 intake manifold you got to get a, an adapter uh, for it to fit for it to work so that's another hundred dollars 
I also have a Circle D, uh, 30, roughly 3,800 stall torque converter. Uh, that was another uh, $1,200. Uh, and basically that really lowered my 60 foot quite a bit by like two tenths and got me a couple tenths off my ET as well. So race application, you're definitely gonna want the torque converter. Uh, if you're not going to, you know, the drag strip or doing uh, off the line pulls, you really don't need the torque converter. Um, you can stay with the stock torque converter and do roll races all day long to your heart's content. Okay, uh, so I also have the Borla Attack catback exhaust. That was another, uh, you buy them new, $1,300, $1,400. These are all new prices for the most. If it's used part, I'll tell you. Um, but if it's new, I'll, I'll give you the new part, the new part price. Um, so I got my my attack cat back used. Uh, I got it for I think it was like five or six hundred bucks. Couldn't pass it up. Uh, and I actually had it installed at the same time. So that was a good deal. So that's my Borla attack cat back exhaust. I also have Cooks long tube headers. They were another, I think they're fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, uh, maybe a little more pricier than that. Uh, so I have those as well, and I got high flow cats. So keep that in mind. Uh, so all my suspension parts for the rear, I've only done the rear, I haven't done anything to the front yet. So every, all the suspension I've done is from BMR suspension, and that's the upper and lower control arms and the upper trailing arm. Those three things in the rear, uh, that was uh, six, like right at 600 bucks. I think it was right around $200 a piece for each set, upper, lower, and upper trailing arm. So that was like 600 bucks. Uh, these are nice cities to have, you don't have to have them. Uh, I got my boost gauge and my AFR gauge. Um, especially if you go with the uh, the extended option for the Diablo, um, you really don't need the fuel air AFR gauge anymore because you can you can log it right there in the Diablo. But I got my boost gauge and my a AFR gauge. Each one of those was $180, roughly, give or take. Um, so $360 for both of them. Uh, I'm going to include my tuning costs. So my most recent tune, uh, the PCM tune. Uh, was $500 and the TCM tune was another $200 to get that both done. And then of course you're going to have to buy the Diablo uh, T2. Uh, well I have the T2. You can go with the uh, uh, what is it, iTune 3. It's a little cheaper and that was roughly, I think mine was like $500 because it came with, with all of the work I did uh, at Steve White Motors in North Carolina. So I think I paid like 500, but they're like 599 or 699 uh, brand new. So that runs down the uh, pretty much the entire mod list. So it's as you can see, it's uh, quite quite extensive. Again, it's I'm at the point where shake and bake is is a race car. Let's be honest. Let's be. Let's be honest and upfront with each other. <laughs> and all of that, uh, I think I did it on the calculator. You guys can add it up. I, it was like right around $16,000, $16,000, $17,000. And yes, a lot of you are gonna go, yeah, you should have just bought, bought a Hellcat. Well, uh, I got my car at a pretty good deal when I bought it. And, this, and that's, all those mods are over the last four and a half years. I didn't do them all at once. Okay, I didn't do them all at once. So it was just mod, save, mod, save, mod, save. Uh, that's just kind of how I did it. And I'm at just over 90,000 miles. <laughs> so car's been great, car's been awesome. But back to modifications. Um, yes, with labor cost, you could probably add another, depending on where you go and who you get, you know, uh, you know, if you go to a performance shop, <laughs> yeah, you're going to pay out the yin-yang for, uh, uh, for labor. Uh, but 
I've been lucky to have some friends do a, a number of things for me, uh, so I've saved on labor. Um, but you could easily be in, you know, take 17 and turn that into 25, 26, uh, easy with labor. Uh, yeah, you know, the warranty discussion is always a discussion <laughs> as well, but. You know, if you're gonna wind up modding your car, even those Hellcats and change a pulley, hey, that voids the warranty. Now, obviously that's much easier to go back to stock and take it in and say, you know, it broke, uh, compared to doing all that work to a 5.7 and say it broke and, and, and take it back in. But, you know, if you're gonna wind up racing your car, you're gonna wind up throwing a warranty out the window anyway. So, that, you guys ask for it that's all the mods to shake and bake that's the total rundown folks um, I'm just gonna kind of leave it at that or I'm gonna start rambling on about 50 other things uh, that people always hit me up but we'll get into other videos uh, answer all those questions as well but I hope you all like this hope you all got something out of the out of this you know modification video once again um, and hopefully it answers a lot of people's questions so that's it for this one, folks. Until next time, adios.